Should serving as a firefighter mean surrendering your God-given right to free speech? That is a risk I never associated with fighting fires, but I'm living proof that it's real. In 2015, my 34-year dream career ended abruptly when I was fired from my position as fire chief for the city of Atlanta. Why was I fired? Simply for expressing widely held biblical Christian views on marriage and sexuality in a book I wrote on my own time in my personal capacity. Ever since I was a young child growing up in Shreveport, Louisiana, I dreamed of becoming a firefighter. I was five years old watching television with my brothers and sisters when we heard sirens outside the door. We sprang to our feet, opened the front door, and there was a big red Shreveport fire truck outside our house. Miss Maddie, who lived across the alley from us, her house was on fire. I watched those firefighters with such amazement I looked at my mother and brothers and sisters and said, I want to be a fireman when I grow up. And that's just what I did, starting in 1981 when I joined the Shreveport Fire Department. At that time, fire stations were still segregated. In the early days of desegregation, black firefighters had a designated bed in the dormitory. Some fire stations had separate dishes from those of the white firefighters. I decided If I were ever in a position of leadership, I would ensure no one in the fire department would ever be discriminated against like I was. There would be no racism, sexism, favoritism, or nepotism. I took the conviction with me as I advanced through my career, first as fire chief in Shreveport and later as fire chief of the city of Atlanta. In 2009, President Barack Obama appointed me, and the U.S. Senate unanimously confirmed me to the post of United States Fire Administrator. It was an opportunity I just couldn't pass up. What an honor to serve the country where so much was possible through hard work and integrity. As a child, I was taught, if you have faith in God, get a good education, respect authority, and treat other people how you want to be treated, all your dreams would come true. And that certainly was true in my case. I was less than a year in my new position when Atlanta elected the Honorable Mayor Kasim Reed. While on a trip to Washington, D.C., following his election, Mayor Reed, in his words, begged me to come back to Atlanta and resume my duties as the city's fire chief. After prayerful consideration, I accepted the offer to serve my fellow citizens in Atlanta once again. In 2012, I was named Fire Chief of the Year by Fire Chief Magazine. I remember how grateful I felt as Mayor Reed thanked me publicly for what he called my pioneering efforts to improve performance and service within the Atlanta Fire and Rescue Department. A year later, I wrote and self-published a devotional book for a men's Bible study. The book was aimed at helping Christian men live a faith-filled, virtuous life. Out of 162 pages, it included about six pages on biblical sexuality. At the time I wrote it, I checked and double-checked with the city's ethics officer to make sure that I wasn't violating any city policy. I also checked to see if I could include the fact that I was serving as Atlanta's fire chief in my About the Author section. She assured me that I was in the clear and asked that I send her a copy of the book once it was published. Over the course of the next year, I gave copies of the book to a few Christian colleagues, including Mayor Reed, and a few Christian men on the city council. But in 2014, a year after the book was published, Mayor Reed announced that some people disagreed with what I had written. I was being suspended without pay for 30 days, compelled to complete sensitivity training, and investigated for any potential discrimination from my past or present. They found nothing. Not one single allegation that I had treated anyone with anything less than dignity and respect in all my 34 years of service. I was not surprised. My faith leads me to love people to treat them as I would want to be treated. Still, under the guise of tolerance and diversity, 
Mayor Reed fired me anyway. It's still staggering to realize that the very faith that led me to pursuing my career was weaponized to destroy it. Disagreement is not discrimination. In fact, true diversity means protecting our freedoms to disagree, especially on important issues like marriage and sexuality. With the help of attorneys from Alliance Defending Freedom, I filed a federal lawsuit, which we won. No one should be forced to choose between their childhood dream and the faith that drives them to pursue that goal. That's why my victory in court was a win for every American. This happened to me, but it's not just about me. It's a warning to every American that freedom of speech and religion always hangs by a thread which will snap if we don't fight to preserve these cherished liberties. Find out how you can join the movement to defend our First Amendment freedoms at www.adflegal.org slash stand for freedom.